George Lutkins lived in the county of Somerset in a small town called Yatton. On the 31st of May 1778, the Reverend Joseph Easterbrook, the Anglican vicar of Temple Church, was summoned by one of his parishioners, Mrs Sarah Barber. She told him of the man, George Lutkins, who she knew from the town she had been visiting with her husband. She told him of Lutkins' infliction, about his fierce fits, where he would flail about, fall to the floor, writhing. His body contorted as he shouted what sounded like nonsense from his mouth. His voice would change as he sang and spoke in an accent they didn't recognise. He would scream, cursing and swearing before his body relaxed and he sat exhausted in a daze. She had known Mr Lutkins for some time as her husband was originally from Yatton and he knew the Lutkins family well. She relayed to the Reverend that George Lutkins and his family were well respected in the town and went to church regularly. She also told the Reverend, surprisingly, Mr Lutkins, a 44-year-old tailor, had been inflicted with these fits for at least 18 years and was under the care of a respected doctor, Mr Smith of Rington. He spent 20 weeks in hospital and eventually they had declared him incurable as all the other doctors had tried and failed. As time went on, the people of Yatton started to think that the poor Mr Lutkins was bewitched. He himself stated that he believed he had been hit by a supernatural slap that sent him flying while in a Christmas pageant years earlier. It was then, he felt, he was possessed by seven devils and his only cure is to be exercised by seven men of the clergy. But they could not find seven clergy from the area they lived in. The Reverend had known Mrs Barber for nine years as she attended his church regularly so he decided to help, along with some of his colleagues, if they would agree. After trying to arrange a visit to Yatton, the Reverend's other duties kept him busy at his parish. So he asked Mrs Barber if they could arrange for Mr Lutkins to travel to his parish in Bristol. George Lutkins travelled to Bristol and stayed with a Mr Westcote. It didn't take long before Lutkins' fit started and many people looked on in horror on more than one occasion as they witnessed Lutkin in his frenzy. The Reverend Easterbrook asked his close colleagues, those of who he thought might be open to the supernatural if they would accompany him in prayer over this man whose case they had to admit was fascinating. Reverend Sims, Rector of St Werbera, Reverend Dr Robbins, Presenter of the Cathedral and Reverend Brown, Rector of Portishead all turned him down. The Reverend despaired that he wouldn't be able to find someone to help him and he watched and pitied George Lutkin more and more 
as his fits continued. He was determined to try and rid George of his demons. But he was finding it difficult to find other clergy to help him. He had been vigilant in his efforts to keep the possible prayer meeting for the unfortunate man as secret as he could. Until out of the blue, a letter was sent to a newspaper, the Bristol Gazette. The letter gave full details of the case telling them all that he had witnessed and all the difficulties the Reverend Easterbrook was going through, trying to help the man. He went into great detail, telling how the demon spoke, claiming that it would stay with Lutkins for the rest of his life and would control him forever. It told of Lutkins' emancipated state and how, over the years, his body was exhausted by the torment he was going through. It told of the daily fits amounting to up to nine times a day. In the final paragraph, it referred to the readers that if they questioned the authenticity of the article, or of the man the article referred to, the author would gladly talk to them. This shocked the Reverend, and he was certain this would result in anger from his community. As he was trying to be very discreet about the whole affair. But as surprisingly, it had the opposite result. The planned prayer meeting somehow became public knowledge. People sat on the vestry walls and gathered around the temple church. They heard from themselves the singing and voices emanating from Mr. Lutkins. The case of Mr. George Lutkins spread far. The papers from different parts of the country were all talking about what was happening in the Bristol church. From Bath to London, the criers called out the news. It was unfortunate, but not unexpected, that the news of the prayer meeting became twisted after Friday the 13th. Before facing Mr Lutkins, Reverend Easterbrook called out to God, asking for his guidance. On that day, Friday the 13th of June, as a consequence of the first letter to the paper, a number of ministers offered their help. They met at the Temple Church Vestry at 11am. 14 people gathered to offer up petitions to the throne of grace for the relief of the affected man. They started by singing a hymn. As soon as this started, Lutkin's body started to shake uncontrollably. His hands shook and he looked straight at them, his voice rasping and hissing. He berated the men mocking them, calling them fools for thinking the prayers would help. He swore at them and stated that he, the demon, would never let go of his hold over Lutkins and would make his torment a thousand times worse for trying to attempt to dispel them. He then spoke in a female voice, cursing the prayers and swore to the devil that they would never be able to rid the man of the demons. He sung in the same female voice before his tormented body 
once again lashed and flailed about. Another voice came through, swearing and cursing. Lutkin's body was thrown violently on the floor and tortured so badly the Reverend left out the details as they were too distressing. He then shouted, I am the great devil and boasted of his powers, singing a haunting song he raged. Lutkin's body fought the men holding him. He became so strong they couldn't hold him any longer. The demon would growl at them and laugh insanely. Lutkin's face showed how agonising this was for him. He screamed to all the demons to gather and chase all the company away. While the ministers prayed harder, Lutkins laughed and sang a song to the devil in different voices. Lutkins shouted and sang, but the more he did this, the more the ministers prayed and sang hymns. Lutkins' body remained twisted and tormented as the voices continued. As the room became filled with louder and louder cries and the minister's singing continued, one of the ordained shouted at Lutkins to reveal the name of the devil that possessed him. The response came, I am the devil. I am here to show you my great power. The clergyman demanded that the man say the name of Jesus, to which he replied, Devil. The clergyman then demanded several times, in the name of Jesus and in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost, the evil spirit depart from the man. The man replied, must I give up my power? And howled. There then came a different voice, a female, stating, Our master has deceived us. The clergyman continued his adjuration. The voice then asked, Where should we go? The reply came boldly, to hell thine own infernal den and return no more. Lutkin's body shook violently for a time while screaming and howling. After this, Lutkin's looked around and blessed Jesus' name. They all fell to their knees and said the Lord's Prayer. After two hours, the exhausted men departed. The Reverend Easterbrook sent George Lutkins home, having been entirely delivered. People wanted to know exactly what had happened on that day as many rumours started after the first letter went public. Dr Ferrier, a medical demonologist, criticised George Lutkins, calling him a fraud, and sceptics felt that Lutkins actually suffered epilepsy and St Vitus dance a disease that affected the muscles. So the Reverend decided to write his own letter to the Bristol Gazette, stating that indeed there was a prayer meeting at the Temple Church and Mr George Lutkins had 
being cured of his affliction through faith and prayer and has gone on to live a normal, happy life. The friends of Mr Lupkins and his family praised the Reverend and thanked them all for their help and for believing in him. Thank you for watching.